Hey guys, welcome back. It's Redox, and today I want to show you guys the Jade Catalyst Missile Base Rush Strategy. And with this strategy, you're going to need Commander Jade, and you're going to need a Chemical Warrior, or a Chem Buggy, or you can use both. In this case, I've used both with this strategy. And um, yeah, basically what you want to do with this strategy is you want to ignite the base tiles with Tiberium Gas with these two units, and then fire a missile on top of it. As you read in the description of the Jade Commander here, fires a medium damage missile. If it hits the Tiberium Gas, its damage is increased and it also damages all adjacent tiles. So when you light a tile with one of the uh, Chemical Warriors or the Chem Buggy, it's going to leave a Tiberium Gas Cloud on that tile, which remains um, for a period of time before it disappears. And when you fire a missile onto that gas cloud, it's going to explode that tile doing damage, but it's also going to um, cause a chain reaction damaging um, tiles surrounding it as well. Now, with the Chemical Warriors and the Cam Buggy, you can actually attack multiple tiles. If you fire a missile onto one of those gas clouds, it will cause a chain reaction to blow, blow up on the surrounding tiles, but because you have another gas cloud next to that gas cloud, it's actually going to cause an extra chain reaction causing more damage to a, the adjacent tiles next to the second gas cloud as well. So the more gas clouds you have adjacent to each other, you can cause a massive, massive chain reaction blowing up all surrounding areas. So essentially, if you were to ignite multiple tiles that, that were adjacent to each other with the Tiberium Gas Cloud with the Chemical Warrior and the Cam or the Cam Buggy, and you fire a missile on one, one of those uh, tiles with the Tiberium Gas, you're gonna cause a massive chain reaction that's gonna blow up a good chunk of the map, exploding and killing many, many units in that process. So you can cause endless chain reactions if your opponents let you do it, but this strategy gets harder to pull off as you go higher up the ladder, of course. So to keep that in mind, it usually works better in the lower ranks, but it's an easy way to climb yourself if you did want to try this strategy out. Now, how it really works is it's it's the same thing as just lighting up any tiles with a Tiberium Gas Cloud, but basically you want to light up the enemy base. So the enemy base um, usually has about three to four tiles um, that you can attack on. So if you ignite all four of those tiles at the same time, and you fire a missile on top of one of those tiles, on the base tile, it's gonna cause a massive damage. And if you if you ignite up to four tiles, I believe you can take up to 50% of the base health. If you uh, ignite three tiles, then you can, you'll take about 75% of the, sorry, not 75%, about 30 to 40% of the base's health. And if you ignite two tiles, it will take about, the base will take about 25% health damage. And if you ignite one tile, the base will take about 20% damage. That's what I noticed. And in most of the games, I've only really been able to ignite about two tiles. Um, it gets more diff it gets more difficult to light up three to four tiles. Also, some maps don't let you ignite up to four tiles because there are rocks that are um, on the ground right next to the base tile, so you can't move any ground units on it. You can only move air units on it. So. It's much easier to ignite one to two tiles on the base. So, I mean, you don't necessarily have to go and ignite three to four tiles. That's something that's a lot easier to do at lower ranks. It, it's not as easy to pull that off when you get to higher ranks. So it's fine if you just ignite one to two tiles, but ba because basically if you take 25% of the base, uh, base health, you just have to fire one more missile with that strategy. So just two more missile, two missiles and 50% of the health is gone on the base and as long as you secure the first launch pad or the second launch pad, um, that will already take the base, uh, the enemy base's health by 50%. So ideally, you want to rush for the first launch pad missile. And once you rush for that first missile and you hit the enemy's base down to 50% health, then you don't have to really worry as much on the launch pads. What I do is I tend to just rush in with my chemical warriors or the chem, chem buggies and then light up his base and then fire a missile on it. That's usually what I like to do. Of course, there are many ways to do it, but let me show you what I did in these upcoming games. All right, guys, this will be the first game here, and we're both gonna be not here. I'll be on the left as red, my opponent will be in the blue, 
And I'm going to start off with the Harvester opening, so is he. And I'm going to go straight into the Hand of Nod. And I'm going to just see what he has on the battlefield first. So I go into the Rifleman, or the, sorry, the Militant Squad here. And uh, I see that he's got some Venoms. And of course, Venoms counter infantry very well because... It's an air unit, and also my militant can't attack his Venoms. So I go for an attack bike here, and I just try to see if he had a double harvester on the top. So I just, uh, I'm trying to just scout out with a with my, uh, militant squad, and I'm trying to uh, take down his Venoms with my attack bikes, because the attack bikes will definitely take out these Venoms easily. And he goes for a Banshee, and the Banshee is at level 9, so it's going to be hard for my attack bikes to take it out on its own. But um, he is this, he's not microing his Banshee very well on the top. Um, so that does go down. And I go for his Harvester eventually because he's not really protecting it very well. And I'm about to get the first missile. So my goal, once again, is to capture the first missile. Keep that in mind. And then I'm going to go for some Tam Troopers. Now, you don't necessarily have to capture the first missile. But it just makes your life a lot more easier, right? Because now I only need to take... Um, 50 percent of his base health so i build a chemical warrior um instead of instead of a chemical buggy because he's got banshees i used one missile on that tile as you guys saw because um his harvester was on a low health and it took out his banshee as well and with my chemical warrior i finish off that harvester so i get some extra crystals now i have to the problem is i have to wait for the cooldown on the catalyst missile to come back before i can send my chemical warriors to his base um, to ignite his base with Tiberium Gas, and then I can launch that Jade's Catalyst Missile on top of it. So, I have to wait for the cooldown, and basically we're just kind of uh, fighting for the map here. And he goes for an Obelisk of Light there, so any unit that's around it will get shredded. So I just send my Chemical Warrior on top of his Obelisk of Light there, trying to do some damage. And it's eventually going to go down. He goes for a Banshees again. Um, I go for some lasers. The lasers are great against Banshees, of course. And at this time, I have my cooldown ready. So with my Chemical Warrior, I ignite one tile, as you guys saw there. And I'm going to ignite a second base tile. Now, it's hard to ignite a third tile because I didn't have a second Chemical Warrior there. But as you guys saw, it does about 25% damage if you ignite two tiles. So if even if I lost the missile here on the second launch pad, like I didn't need to, but I really just wanted to um, blow up his base with this Catalyst Missile. That's really what I wanted to do in this video, so I didn't really care about capturing launch pads, because I just need to ignite one, two more tiles on his base. He actually goes for a flame tank to try to rush down my base as well, and I caught that, so I build tanks immediately, because flame tanks do so much damage. And at this point, I just ignite one tile, because uh, with my chem buggy doing some damage on his base, um, he was already at about 20% health there. So when you ignite one tile and you fire a missile, the missile damage to the base will do about 20% damage. So about two more missile, two missiles there, and I won the game. All right, guys, this will be the second game here, and this will be Nod versus GDI, and I'll be in the red again on the left, and my opponent will be in the blue, and. I will go into a standard opening again here with the Harvester. Again, my first goal here is to control the first missile. Okay, the first missile on the launch pad is what I'm going for right now. And he goes for a missile uh, trooper here and he tries to go for my Harvesters. And with my Militants, of course, that will counter his missile squad. So there was no problem with dealing with that. He goes for a Shockwave and I see this. so. I know my militants, of course, can't handle the shockwaves. So I just try to kind of run around the map here, see if he's got double harvesters. Because, of course, if he's got double harvesters, I really need to stop that with my attack bikes. I go for some chem buggies, and I have to tell you guys, chem buggies are amazing against infantry units, including missile troopers, and sometimes stronger units like zone troopers as well. Um, I do really like the chem buggy. The chem buggy has a large amount of DPS. As you guys can see, it's a lo the level 6 chem buggy can absolutely shred level 8 even a level 8 missile launcher there and i go for an attack buggy of my own there and um, as you guys saw on the southern portion he actually kills my militants there with his uh, shock waves and his commander power but my cam buggies will pretty much decimate all his infantry units and he goes for some drones now seeing uh, maybe the drones can count perhaps counter my cam buggies but i mean drones are not 
as good against vehicle units. So, I mean, he could have built some other air units. I'm not sure exactly what units he had. But now I got the first missile, so I'm going to ignite, hit two of his tiles here. And I could have tried to ignite the third tile as well, but um, I decided, hey, you know what? I, I'm okay with the two tile combo. If you do ignite three tiles, it's still not going to destroy the enemy base anyways. You need to ignite up to four tiles, I believe, if you want to actually take the base out in one hit while it's at 50% health. So there's really no point of igniting the base with two tiles. And as you guys see on the map, on his base side, I'm just constantly damaging his base because he's not really effectively countering my chem buggies here. And I, as eventually his health of the base goes down and down. Um, and just one missile here, even if it's not ignited, even if that tile was not ignited with the Tiberian gas, I take it out. So that's really it, guys. If your opponent's base health is that low anyways, you can just fire a missile on top of a tile that doesn't have Tiberium Gas Cloud because you know you're going to win the game anyways. Establishing battlefield control. Alright guys, and the final game here will be not, not against Nod again. And um, he has higher level units than me overall, so that's why it says that no medals lost on victory, on loss, sorry. And I go straight into a War Factory, into a Scorpion tank this time. Because I saw that he, it said, you know, in the beginning he had higher level units. So I definitely didn't want to be too behind on this game. I didn't want to let him farm it out. He might have some, you know, expensive, very high level uh, Temple of Nod units. And he goes for double harvesters. So I was kind of correct on my suspicions. And uh, let me just actually fast forward this part a little bit for you guys. I mean, it's pr he pretty much screwed up here. I mean, going for double harvesters while I go for my war factory yes, units like this. He's not protecting very well, and I, I'm just getting free crystals. So I'm just going to speed this up here. I go right in for the chem buggy, and I decide to ignite his base right away. Because he's really... He's not really putting any pressure on me. There's no threat. So I fired out one missile. It's going to do about 25% damage. And I decide to now capture the uh, base. In this kind of scenario, I could have built another chemical warrior like I did on the bottom and I could have ignited all three tiles of his base but and fired a missile which would have done which would have done about 40% damage on his base but you know I didn't think that was necessary. He goes for a cyborg and as you guys can see the chem buggy actually does a ton of damage to cyborgs. The cyborgs will actually beat the chem buggy but he was focusing on my tank bikes first and uh, of course that's why it went down. And then at this point, I just need to, I just need to uh, attack one tile. Look at his base health; it was at about 20% uh, health. So you know, if I fire a missile on just one tile that was ignited with Tiberian gas, it's gonna win. It's gonna kill his base. So that's really it, guys. Um, this is kind of the strategy you use. You can ignite more tiles on the enemy base. You can ignite up to three to four. On this map, I, you can only ignite three tiles because there was a rock on the fourth tile next to the base. So. Of course, the more tiles you ignite with the chemical uh, weapons, the more damage you'll do to the base. So basically, the combo that I like to go for is secure the launch pad, get the first missile, and then attack, uh, send out my chemical warriors or cam buggies onto the enemy base, ignite two tiles, fire a missile, and repeat that process twice, and then win the game. That's kind of how I do it, but you can definitely um, ignite more base tiles if you wanted, and cause more damage so it's up to you on how you guys do it i just wanted to show you guys the uh, method and the technique in this so i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys next time